Well, hello there, YouTube. My name is Tony, and this is Tony Live TV. And in this video, I'm gonna look at the oxygen sensor, or the O2 sensor, or Lamba probe, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna be testing it, but it's really not worth your time. Uh, these are fairly inexpensive. If you look on eBay, these things will cost you around $150 or something like that. Nonsense. Uh, I bought mine on Amazon for like $38. I'll have a link in the description for this O2 sensor. It, it works with many of them. This is a short video, so if you would, please stick around to the end because I, I want to wrap this all up at the end. This bottom panel is actually quite easy. You have to remove, of course, this bottom piece of carpet and peel this one to the side here. Right there is your line for the oxygen sensor line, and that goes behind here. So this is a plastic panel, it's a thick plastic panel, and then it has these little things here that can twist on to these little nuts. So that's how you get that off. You just have to remove it like that. Need to pull this out like that. You see the temperature gauge is already warm. So there's the waveform of that O2 sensor. And you can see our voltage is, uh, you know, fluctuating between seven and 800 roughly, right in there. What I want to do now is I want to give it a higher RPM and see what happens with that waveform. take to respond. Not too long. That's kind of what I expected. Well, this thing really just comes apart, just slides apart, but there's a little tab right here. You probably can't really see it, but there's a little tab, and you can kind of push that in a little bit and then separate the two, just like that. And they can only go on one way. So you can't mess it up. Pushing that through. Let's go down below. Let's get a hold of this baby. Ah, that is why you use antices. Well, there it is. Now, it came with anises on it, but if yours doesn't, put it on there. I also put a little bit more because I felt like it wasn't quite enough. I don't know. It really doesn't take much. Be curious to see the difference between the two. Let's crush that crush washer. There we go. All right, now you notice the waveform don't show anything. There's the dash. Everything's cold right now. You see there's no, nothing at all. And there it is. She started up. So far, no activity as you can see on the O2 sensor.
show you, starting to see some activity. A little bit, there we go. All right, the engine's warm. At least as warm as it's gonna get. 812 millivolts, 826. But now we're starting to see the activity. And you see it's very similar to what the other one did. Oh, watch. You know what's supposed to happen when you take that off, right? I'm not doing it now. That's not increasing. That's my idle. That's still considered high. It should be at about 44, 43. This video was not supposed to be about this, but I mean, it's all part of this whole series, you know? I mean, it's all ridiculous, all the things that's going on here. I don't understand it. You know, I checked all the wiring on the N3 or the ECU. You know, as far as the wiring is concerned, every bit of those is what I checked. You know, I and I made sure that there was voltage to it for number one. I also made sure there was a ground, and I made sure that every one of these connections go to where they belong. I also know that the idle speed control unit is functioning as long as it has an RPM signal. So you might say, oh, Tony, you know, you know you don't have a TAC, you know, so it's obviously RPM. But that's not how it works on the 560 SL. The tachometer is not fed by that, by the EZL, like it feeds the whole KE Jetronic system. They call it an e -taco. So I might have a problem with that sensor, I might have some wiring, or I could have a ground issue or something. To me, that was an entirely different scenario. After I fixed the throttle position switch, that wiring right there, the idle was much better. Although it's like really low. The car run, the engine's running worse right now than it did before I fixed it. I'm gonna tell you that right now. If you look back in the video a little bit, you'll see that there's a little stuttering a little bit. Can I play around with that mixture screw? Maybe, maybe, but remember, I disconnected the ISCV, right? And you didn't see the engine increase. You didn't, or the RPMs, I keep saying engine, but the RPMs did not increase. And they should. It was totally warmed up. The whole engine is completely where everything needs to be. At this point, it's not like I have an extra ECU in the glove box, so I can't swap it out and see if that's the issue. That's a possibility, but I also suspect it could be the EZL, you know? I mean, it was still connected to that bad wiring. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm really, I kind of almost made a step back because it actually did run better, like I said, before I fixed that. <laughs> it, because the idle is much lower now and I don't think the vehicle knows where its idle is and that's why I suspect it's something to do with either the EZL or the rear TDC, you know. This video is correct. That's what your O2 sensor should look like. You know, every component's functioning properly. The potentiometer is the way it's supposed to be. The idle control valve works the way it is. The idle speed control unit is working properly. We, we tested everything. So all of it is functioning the way they're supposed to be, but there's it's not talking to the system, right? I know if I send a tax signal to the idle speed control unit that it functions, maybe I can send that to the ECU so it actually sends that signal along its path. <laughs> you, you get where I'm going? I'm not gonna drive it. If it's not perfect, I don't wanna drive it. Just go buy one of these. It's $45 on Amazon. This talks to the ECU. The ECU really gathers all this information. As a matter of fact, my buddy from uh, Fix Your Mercedes, um, he explained the ECU 
it's really what it is. It just gathers all these different sensors and then it makes all the little final adjustments to the EHA. But if you notice, we're also not getting the, the idle speed control valve to come on either. ECU, hmm. ECL, hmm. I'm gonna be checking signals and voltages and all that, so I mean, you know, I'm not giving up, but I'm getting really tired. I know that I have some people that follow me that are pretty sharp. The best way to get a hold of me is through PayPal. <laughs> I bet you Pierre's got them stacked up, right? He's got them stacked up. I just have a nice toolbox, but I don't have all them nice parts in there. All right, you guys, I gotta go. I really gotta go. I got a puppy that I have not really spent time with. I'd like to go out there and go play with the puppy. She's almost six months old, and I, I've been neglecting her, so. Until the next time, thanks again for watching.